In this video we are going to talk about evolution of Will Smith. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. Smith lost his Midas touch in the 2010s after controlling Hollywood for so long. Now King Richard is in charge of Hollywood and its Oscar season. Will Smith refused to play Ollie. Although attracted by the position, he felt incapable of portraying such a legendary man. In an interview with ABC's Primetime in 2001, he said that he absolutely, completely did not want to be the person who messed up the Muhammad Ali tale. For the role, Smith had to put on muscle, go through intense boxing training, and emulate everything from Ali's style to his speech pattern. Smith became Ali, representing the greatest figure of the last 100 years. And he was. Ali is vital to Will Smith's mythology. He'd already had massive box office success by the turn of the millennium, but Ali, released on Christmas Day, cemented Smith's status as a serious performer. Despite the film's failure at the box office, Smith had overcome his greatest acting hurdle. Prior to this, he hadn't played a real-life character famed for his achievements in and out of the ring. Smith's performance was nominated for an Oscar, which he lost to none other than Denzel Washington. A period of unmoored stagnation followed remarkable highs for Smith in the two decades since Ali. Between 2002 and 2008, he had eight films grossing over $100 million at the U.S. box office. A decade of commercial failures and flaws in the Will Smith facade that Smith worked so hard to build. Twenty years after playing Ollie, Smith is back in the spotlight as another divisive sports personality. Smith stars as Richard Williams, the courageous father of Venus and Serena Williams, who coached his daughters to be two of the most important athletes in sports history. The fact that Williams spent the 1990s pushing his daughters up the mountain ruffled some tennis feathers in a world still shaken by his presence and intimidated by his daughters. Smith is back at it again, but this time the stakes are higher. He wants to come back from a time when he didn't seem to be indestructible, at a time when stardom is seen in a very different way than when he first came on the scene. It's impossible to tell Will Smith's story without mentioning his role as a cop. He elevated the model of the suavely aspirational black guy in institutional leadership, popularized by Eddie Murphy in the 1980s. In Bad Boys, 1995, he tried his hand at cinematic success, adapting his charisma from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air to a hero cop fantasy. And he was revered for it all. Mike Lowry was the quintessential cool guy who broke the rules, drove a Porsche 911, had ladies in his palms and everywhere else, and was revered for it all. Smith starred in Men in Black as a cop recruited by a covert agency that tracks aliens. Agent J claims he brought style to the assignment, complimenting Tommy Lee Jones' stoic interplanetary agent. It also helped that Smith leveraged his rap career to promote the picture with a multi-platinum single of the same name. That dynamic extended to the sequels to Men in Black and Bad Boys, which were his first two films after Ali. He also starred in I, Robot, 2004, and Hancock, 2008, both of which grossed over $100 million domestically. To date, he has appeared in three films, 2016's Mercenary, 2017's Bright, and 2020's Bad Boys 2, reprising his role as Mike Lowry. Smith has revealed his formula. In 2015, he told his manager, James Lasseter, that he wanted to be the world's biggest movie star. They came up with a plan after studying the 10 biggest box office hits ever. He remarked, there were always fantastic effects, animals, and a love story. He stated that he didn't want to act so much that you turn people off, and that a picture with too many animals may make the audience lose interest. I Am Legend, which had the biggest non-Christmas picture opening in December 2007, featured just the correct number of animals. With modest departures like Hitch and The Pursuit of Happiness, Smith's career took off in the mid-90s and continued into the aughts. Smith's Midas touch waned throughout the 2010s. The strategy that made Smith famous has become outmoded. After a hiatus between 2008's Seven Pounds and 2012's Men in Black 3, he kept to the screenplay, but the audience's interests and the movies being pushed had shifted. The list of movies he and Lasseter used to chart their ascension in the 1990s has all but surpassed the list of movies he and Lasseter used to chart their ascension in the 2000s.
Years of trial and error led him to recognize that the playing field was significantly different. After Earth, 2013, received harsh reviews and earned over $243 million globally, when a billion dollars was considered a blockbuster. Smith didn't get into the superhero business until 2016, with Suicide Squad, a good box office hit, but one of the decade's worst superhero pictures. Even though Smith's live-action Aladdin made over $1 billion worldwide in 2019, it didn't seem like a win. Worse than the declining box office was Smith's eroding reputation as a cool, can't-miss movie star. Mr. Blockbuster was stuck in a rut. A year of heightened scrutiny over law enforcement's treatment of black people and significant questions about whether police are even required to let Lowry escape the hook for his carelessness. After Earth was mediocre. With the NFL under fire for its handling of CTE research, Smith's 2015 film Concussion failed to capitalize on either award season enthusiasm or growing condemnation of the NFL. Suicide Squad was fantastic, but the story was a shambles, as was Bright and 2019's Gemini Man, which cost Paramount a fortune. Despite Smith's appearance, Aladdin paled in contrast to the animated original. The 2010s saw a clear separation between box office success and celebrity status, with the former having little to do with the latter. Smith had become the movie star he desired, one who could bask in his popularity. By the time he could comfortably gaze at the blockbuster mountain, it hardly existed. Marketing and sales are no longer a sham, Smith stated at Ken Lyons 2016. People will know instantly and universally if a product delivers on its promises. During his ascension, Smith acknowledged favoring success over artistry. As a marketer, he defined his success as being able to sell his products globally. He identified a fundamental shift in Hollywood, marketers no longer wield power. Bad movies were simpler to sell in the past since spectators couldn't react in real time. Smith acknowledged that social media had changed that. Now people are tweeting, this is garbage, go see Vin Diesel, he stated during the Ken Lyons session. As blockbuster films began to rely more on their intellectual property than the names on their posters, an empowered public began to question the concept of fame. Even though we have an unhealthy appetite for mess, the reaction to Smith's wife, actress Jada Pinkett Smith, being revealed to be involved in a global pandemic that has emphasized the line between the wealthy elite and literally everyone else has forced people to question their celebrity relationships. As a result, Smith, who has always been very concerned with where he stands, has had to think about how he stands. Smith may now shed his public identity. He can't, either, because social media has erased the celebrity audience divide. The public now knows more about Smith's personal life, including his marital struggles, his interactions with his children, and his views on his own father. The ever-shrewd Smith and his family have learned how to use greater visibility to their advantage as social media has evolved. Red Table Talk, the Facebook watch show hosted by Pinkett Smith, Willow Smith, and Adrian Banfield Norris, is both an image control tool and a forum for intergenerational discourse. Smith's personal Red Table presence amid the entangled fallout emphasizes this. For iPhone screens instead of cinema screens, Smith uses social media to reinvent himself as a Gen X influencer dad. It dramatically affected how I interacted with the world and my creative life, he told GQ recently. Smith's growth continues. His film career still fits within this new paradigm, although it is less important than it was in 2001. It's part of his broader portfolio. That's King Richard. Like Ollie, he's taking another massive swing. His persona no longer relies on the success of his films. When Will Smith first arrived in Hollywood, he was king of a certain kind of Hollywood. What do you think about our video? Please let us know in the comments area below. If you enjoyed this video and would want to hear from me again, please subscribe and turn on the notification before leaving. Thank you for watching us.